Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Oceania webinar. Um, I would like to introduce our presenters today, Ellen McElveen, our Expedition Advisor, and John Nicholson, our Director of Operations. They'll be taking you through several programs that we have coming up um, in Oceania. But just before we begin, just a couple housekeeping notes. Everybody on the call is muted. But if you have any questions throughout our webinar, please feel free to write them in, and we'll address them at the end of the webinar. Um, so without further ado, Alan and John. Good morning. Great. Thank, thank you, Adrian. Um, yeah, we're going to talk to you today about exotic Oceana and some of the exciting expeditions that we have coming up in 2017 and 2018. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just start before we get into all of our itineraries. We want to talk a little bit about what, oh, there we are. I feel like we do that every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's us. Okay. So we want to talk a little bit about a typical expedition, expedition day with Zagram. So not all of our itineraries will be exactly like this. We're constantly changing things around so that we can get off the ship as much as possible. We can experience as much of each place that we visit as we can. But this is a typical day so that you can sort of visualize what the itineraries we'll be discussing will be like. Um, so <clears throat> we know if you're a birder, you want to get off the ship as early as possible. We want to do that too. So we'll get you into the Zodiac as soon as we can. Um, I feel like this photo is a little misleading because it's light out and usually the birders are leaving in the dark. But um, as soon as the ship arrives, if it's possible, we'll get you on your way with our ornithologist. So and that's often before breakfast. So we'll try and offer a really early morning birding option for those of you that want to do that. Go off with a packed breakfast. We'll send you on your way. <clears throat> and so while the rest of us are having our breakfast, our expedition team will go ashore and they'll scout our activities for the day. So we already have a plan, but we'll go check it out, make sure it's all working as we expect it to, or in the case that it's not, which is often, we'll amend our plan. Um, but we usually have breakfast and then disembark for our morning excursions about 8.30 or 9 o'clock, depending on where we are. And we'll stay out for a few hours, <clears throat> and then we'll come back to the ship for lunch. Most of the time we come back to the ship for lunch. Um, if we can do something fun, like have lunch ashore, or this photo shows a lunch barbecue, we'll do something like that. Um, and it just a note, you don't have to stay out all morning if you don't want to. Uh, we'll have shuttles going back and forth in the Zodiac to the ship. Um, but usually the morning excursion is your opportunity to get off the ship before lunch for a couple of hours. <clears throat> then we'll say um, in the afternoon after lunch, maybe we'll give you a little bit of time to rest and change your clothes, and then we go right back out. Um, our expedition team and marine biologists go out and take a look at the reefs and dive locations to find the best place to snorkel and dive. And we'll disembark for our excursion maybe about 2 p.m. We'll stay out for about three to four hours. <clears throat> And that way, uh, you know, snorkelers can stay out the whole time, or you can come back to the ship um, after 30 minutes if you want. We'll have shuttles going back and forth. And when we're snorkeling, you can snorkel on your own. You can go with one of our guides who are interpreting what we're seeing. We really try to make it so that you have your own individual experience and you're not, um, you know, moving as one big group. So it's really a, a nice experience. <clears throat> And after we come back from our afternoon excursion, we'll have a, a recap. Um, and we'll hear from our lecturers and expedition team during that time about what we learned and saw during the day, which is really fun because we'll try to offer a lot of different options. And this way you get to see what other people did, maybe if it's something that you didn't quite do. Um, and we'll also get an, a briefing from our expedition leader during this time as, about what we're going to do the following day. From there, we go into dinner, and uh, we have a dining room. The dining room always accommodates everybody. We don't have assigned seating. Uh, it's a really fun, casual dinner. And uh, some of our ships, you can actually dine inside in the dining room or outside on the Lido deck. So that's, that's actually a nice option. That's just a general idea of, of what happens. Um, sometimes we'll go more, sometimes we'll go in the afternoon or swap it. 
or sometimes we'll uh, depending on where we are and next to Australia's Kimberly uh, we aren't snorkeling at all um, but we wanted to give you an idea of what a typical day with Zagram looks and feels like. So the Kimberly, I know a lot of people uh, from Zagram have been on this Kimberly. We've operated it. We were the first tour operator to ever go there in '96. It is one of our yearly programs. And to me, it is one of the best programs we have. And I think a bit of a surprise. The first time I went, I was looking forward to it, but I was just so blown away by the beauty, the vastness, and the pristine uh, environment that you're in with the brilliant red rock and the uh, blue water. Um, we have programs, as you can see, each year. Um, it goes along from Darwin to Broome or vice versa. We now try to schedule it um, near the full moon or the new moon, so we're near Montgomery Reef at that time, as higher tides are, are better to see Montgomery Reef, which actually appears to come out of the water as the tide drops. Um, lots of wildlife, uh, obviously saltwater crocs, which is why there is no snorkeling on this yeah. program. Um, bird life, uh, a good number of marsupials, uh, as well as other uh, wildlife in, in the water that you can, uh, can see. We also, this is Mitchell Falls. We take a helicopter, which is included up to Mitchell Falls. There actually is some fresh water here that you can, you can swim in. Uh, it's a great way to see the vastness of the Kimberley. And as I, I, I compare this sometimes, I like to say it's a warm Antarctica. It has that same feeling of remoteness, vastness, Nobody else out there. When I was there, we saw one other small boat the entire 10 days I was on the program. Um, there is also a couple of days of chance for cultural experience. We visit the Tiwi Islands. We also go to Raft Point. We have some of the local indigenous people uh, interpret some of the paintings that we have um, that we have there. Yeah, I, um, a little bit about Raft Point, which I think is just really special. So. Um, there's a man named Donnie Wulagucha, and he's the custodian for the, the paintings at Raft Point. He's the elder um, of the Wurra tribe, and so he's touching up this art and traditions of the land that um, his father passed on to him. So we meet with him and the people that, the young people that he's passing these traditions on to. It's really a, a, a really special experience. Donnie's known worldwide for his artwork. He designed um, a series of Ginga figure that was on the later in the Sydney. 2000 Olympics open, opening ceremony. So this is like a really special cultural component to this trip. Um, and this is something that's only in the Kimberley. So you can see these figures. Um, the Gina, these are paintings of the Supreme Creator. I won't explain it, so I'm sure I'll do it totally wrong. Um, but it's actually, it's fascinating. This is the oldest continuous sacred painting movement on the planet. And it's only found in the Kimberley. And we get to go and and learn from it. And our, we obviously have an anthropologist with us who explains it. Um, I mean, I went on the trip. I learned that. You'll learn even more. It's, it's absolutely a fantastic experience. So this is the, the horizontal waterfalls, again, making use of tides. Um, the, with the tide rising or falling, um, it actually moves fast enough that it is like a waterfall. We get people in zodiacs and give you rides. And if you don't want to, um, you you don't have to, but it's a great fun um, uh, experience. And one thing I wanted to mention about this program, we have a very popular pre-extension that um, goes to Arnhem Land and goes to Kunaora and the Bungle Bungles, which are the rock formations that look like honeycombs. Um, normally that program sells out every year, but Arnhem Land gives you a further cultural experience. Uh, and then uh, Kunaora is a is geology and also wildlife. So the Kimberley is a, uh, a destination. We have both the archers two years, in the next two years, and it is a great way to see a part of Australia that most people have not seen. Great. We got a, we have a few comments that the audio is not great, so we're trying to adjust it, stick with us, and um, we'll try and try and fix that for you. Um, <clears throat> but we'll move on to our uh, Faces of Polynesia. So Faces of Polynesia is a Fiji Tahiti uh, trip. 
that um, visits a lot of the small islands of uh, Tonga, Wallace and Fatuna, the Cook Islands, and inns in Tahiti. Um, these places would be very difficult uh, to get to uh, without a ship. Um, and this trip very much has the rhythm that Ellen was describing of getting off in the morning, offering birding, potentially nature walks, certainly having snorkeling. This trip offers diving in many, many of the stops. And so it is a very traditional expeditionary experience um, that Zagram has. Um, as we, we move across, we, we start with Fiji. We continue uh, through Wallace and Fatuna, which is a, still a French territory, before going to Tonga, um, the English background of the Cook Islands, and Tahiti. And there's a tremendous amount of bird life here. There's a lot of rare and endemic birds. The, there's the orange dove, the Tongan whistler, which is uh, the, the second from the left, um, the blue lorikeet, chattering kingfisher. Um, so a, a great wide variety of birds for those of you who are interested in, um, in the birds of this area. Um, the snorkeling, diving is about every single day. There's a lot of coral reefs and a good healthy population of tropical fish. Um, and we offer places for up to 16 divers, which is two zodiacs. So we, we have uh, two dive masters who will take you out and, and show you the underwater. And for the rest of you, we have marine biologists and others who can take you on the, snorkel, the snorkeling excursions um, that we have. Um, we have lots of photography. We have, obviously, this trip ends in the iconic Bora Bora. It has uh, Akutaki, which is one of the largest lagoons in the world. Um, you get this beautiful hues of turquoise and blue uh, throughout the itinerary, as well as a variety of different cultures uh, across the Pacific. And this trip, if you want to continue on your way, you can just keep right on going from Tahiti. <laughs> and continue to Easter Island, which Ellen is going to talk about. Yeah, oh my gosh, I love this itinerary. And, and that's actually a good point, John. A lot of people will do both back to back. Um, if that is something that you have the time for, I can't recommend it highly enough. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and we will um, offer you a 5% savings if you decide to combine the trip. But let's talk about the second leg, Tahiti to Easter Island. So here's our itinerary. Um, start in Papiete, we go through the Suomotos, the Marquesas, Pitcairn Islands, oh my gosh, and we end in Easter Island, absolutely fantastic. Um, <clears throat> so this is another itinerary where we're going from island to island and just a lot of this is populated and we're meeting these groups of beautiful people who are happily welcoming us. And it, it's interesting to observe the differences in the cultures from one little island to the other and we will bring a team of experts who will help show you um, how to look for those things and how to see them. And of course, you can talk with the local people. Um, so most days, as we described in the beginning, you'll have a, a shore visit, opportunity to meet people, go ashore, maybe do a hike, um, and then also, of course, snorkel and dive on the beautiful reef. So this is a photo of the Marquesas. Just a note about the geology, it's absolutely stunning. Volcanoes, lush forests, the canyons. Uh, we have our zodiac, so we're exploring these small bays, bays and coves. It's just absolutely stunning. And we have to, of course, mention Pitcairn Island. For me, when I did this itinerary, I have to say this was the highlight. I find the story of the mutiny on the bounty absolutely fascinating. And so we do go ashore on Pitcairn Island. That's one of the questions that we get the most when people are asking us about this itinerary. Yes, we like to say we plan to go ashore. They're expecting us to come ashore. You can never totally guarantee because um, the waves in that part of the world are so extreme. But we've made it the past several years. I, yeah. yeah. I think in my 20 years at Bigger, we've only had one time we didn't make it. Yeah. So, so there you go. Good odds. Great odds. Um, it's absolutely fascinating. And um, the people who live on Karen Island, we've now been going there for years, and they know us. They're our friends. And so if you're looking at these photos, the woman in the bottom left in the blue sweater, uh, her name's Irma. She's the oldest woman on the island. Um, she makes these baskets. You can, you can buy them, but it's 20 bucks. But um, it's just absolutely, they're so welcoming. They open their island, and they're really willing to talk about 
the story of the mutiny on the bounty, of the, the lineage of the of the mutineer. So um, the guy in the top middle photo with the chest tattoo, he's a seventh generation descendant of Christian Fletcher who led the mutiny on the bounty. And he was my tour guide. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating. And if you are looking at this itinerary and you think, oh, well, I would love to go on holiday and do some amazing snorkeling and diving, uh, read up on the Mutiny of the Bounty and Sacred Island before because it just adds this other amazing um, aspect to the trip. And one quick thing I will add is um, there's, first of all, very few trips that ever go to Pitcairn. But secondly, we actually go to three of the islands in the Pitcairn group. There are four which to my knowledge, we're the only expedition company to actually visit three of the four Pitcairn Islands. Pitcairn being the main one, but there are two others that we also visit. Yeah, yeah. And so the photo in the top left, um, that's Annette Coulomb, our archeologist, she's showing us these longboats. This is how the locals have to get on and off the island. It's, it's I mean, they, they went there in the first place because it was gonna be hard for anybody to get there, and it is still hard, but we can definitely do it. We have expert drivers. Uh, we can get you safely there, um, and it's just absolutely fascinating. And um, for the birders, we do visit the other two Pickern Islands, Henderson and Ducey, which these are home to really rare and, and um, bird species, endemic species. So Stevens Lorikeet, Henderson Creek Dove, the Murphy's Petrel, the Henderson Island Craig, these are birds you really can't see anywhere else, and if you aren't a birder, uh, and then you go on this trip, you'll leave a birder because it's just absolutely fascinating. This is the kind of birding that I like. It's not hard to see them. I saw all of these birds on my visits to these islands, and um, if I can do it, you can do It's absolutely incredible. Uh, we also learn about the rat eradication and restoration efforts on the island. So there's just highlights all across the itinerary from cultural to marine to birds. It's, it really brings it. And so, obviously, here's some of the shots of the marine. Um, excellent snorkeling and diving. Really healthy reefs, teeming with colorful tropical fish. And also some big stuff, especially for the divers. We saw sharks and manta rays. Uh, Mike Murphy, who's our main dive master, he continuously says that this is his favorite itinerary. Um, that these two, the, the Polynesian for the diving, is spectacular. Um, so, just if you're if you're a diver, you'll absolutely love it. Um, and then, of course, we go to Easter Island. We end on Easter Island. Uh, we see these gigantic moai, the volcanic stone statues. We learn about their original purpose. We have an archaeologist I mentioned, Annette, earlier. She spends most of her time on Easter Island throughout the year doing research and field work. Um, she'll come with us through the whole journey to help us understand the story so that we're building up to this ending on Easter Island. Um, and we have a good understanding of what's going on. We have three days, three full days. Yeah, yeah, so unlike a lot of ships which arrive in the morning in the midday flight, we actually are, you stay on board the ship two nights in Easter Island. So you end up with two and a half days. So you really have a chance to see Easter Island uh, and, and, and experience it and not just have a quick uh, look around and immediately fly out. Yeah, a lot of, it's, a, it's enough time on Easter Island. And you can always, because we're ending there, if you want to stay, if this is a huge highlight for you, you want to stay an extra day or two, we can help you um, with add a hotel room and um, stay on Easter Island for a while longer. So next we'll talk about our best of Micronesia, Rabal to Palau. Um, this is February of 2018. So those asteroid talked about were in 2017. Planning even further here in 2018. <clears throat> Here's our itinerary. So we'll fly from Cairns to Rabal to start uh, with. You don't have to cruise the logistics of flying into Port Moresby. Um, we're trying to make this easy on you, and we're just going to get right right to the good stuff. Although Port Moresby is great. I don't want to say you know that New Guinea's not good, but uh, for this itinerary, this is what we're doing. Um, and similar to the other island itineraries we like to go ashore we love to meet the local people they they are so friendly and generous and welcoming with their cultures and happy to share their dances uh, and their ancient traditions and their really traditional way of life so something that we don't have pictures here that i do want to mention is a baining fire dance in Rabal. 
um, for me, that was one of the highlights of the whole entire trip. So we start, it really starts off with a bang where we go to the island of Rabal. Um, it's part of Papua New Guinea, and it has an active volcano on it. And the culture of the tribes in the Bainy Forest are really influenced by the volcano. So the people there are known for this rite of passage dance that involves dancing in hot coals, dancing in fire, and it, it is not a tourist song and dance show. It is really real. It's absolutely amazing. They invite us to witness it. We have permission to go and watch. And it's an actual ceremony. And they wear these huge masks that are made of bark cloth and they like embody the spirits of the mask. And it's, they work themselves up into like a fever pitch throughout the dance. And so I'm sorry we don't have a photo. When the webinar is over, just Google Baining Fire Dance and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and then after the whole thing, they, they destroy the masks every time. So super, super cultural highlight right from the start. Snorkeling and diving on this itinerary. Nearly every single day we'll snorkel and dive. Um, I mean, Micronesia boasts, what, 1,300 species of, of fish. And we'll go to the Truck Lagoon, famous for the ghost fleet, where there's over 50 coral encrusted ships that were sunk during World War II. A lot of World War II history happening. And it wouldn't be a Zagram trip if we didn't allow you, but not force you, to bird. So a lot of really good seabirds here, um, fruit doves again, truck monarchs, or oceanic flycatchers. Uh, if you're a birder and you're looking at the slide, maybe you know what they are. So <laughs> it's really a wonderful opportunity for birding here. <clears throat> and then there's another major archaeological site on this itinerary as well. So this is the ruined city of non Mont. Model, is that how you say it? Non model. Non yeah. So um, this was my understanding the residency of the royalty and priests from the 12th to 15th centuries, and it's now a national historic landmark. So it's com it's comprised of these 92 megalithic man-made islands that are connected by a network of canals, and we'll go um, learn about it with our archaeologists and historians and um, and visit. It's absolutely stunning. And one other thing I'll comment is, as we sail north from uh, uh, from Rabaul, a lot of the islands we stop at, several of them I should say, about three or four, actually rarely ever see a ship. Uh, and so we'll be warmly welcomed as probably the first ship they might have seen in two to three years. So it's a very authentic experience. Yeah, that's a great point. The people really are so welcoming. Um, and they'll be, it's, just, it's a wonderful exchange. <laughs> It's really fun. All right. So the next one, this is a brand new program for Zagram uh, in July of 2018. It's a great uh, Many of you probably know Brad Clemson. He's the expedition leader. He lives in Cairns, and he has worked very much in getting this trip put together to have the best possible experiences in, in the water uh, on the Barrier Reef and visiting a lot of those places that you would certainly never get to on a day trip uh, out of Cairns, and even visiting some of the more remote parts of the reef um, that are not visited by other other ships. Um, this is all about water. Uh, there, we won't be doing vi village visits or <laughs> or bird walks in the morning. Everything here is about snorkeling or diving. This is a small ship. It holds. Uh, 40 guests will probably with singles have only 35, 36 guests on. Um, so we'll have an even higher uh, Zagram staff to guest ratio than normal with a, with five staff. So we'll be able to split uh, the guests for both diving and for snorkeling uh, on the largest reef system uh, in the world. Um, some of the things that, that the, the divers will see um, with uh, groupers at Cod Hole, um, and hopefully the chance to swim with minke whales as they migrate through the, these waters um, at this time of year. Um, the, for those of you who have been to the Kimberley, this is actually, the ship doesn't operate in the Kimberley, but it's owned by the same company, and they have what they call an explorer as well as normal zodiacs. And the explorer can actually hold uh, nearly everybody, and we use it for a little bit longer distances or to bring people ashore when we do need to go somewhere than just to a reef to do snorkeling. It's, it's nice because we can get everyone together. We can do uh, a, a, a 
um, natural history. We can have our leaders on and explain what we're doing. And it's also a little more comfortable getting on and off because it actually comes on a platform on the back of the ship and then uh, is lowered down uh, in the water. Uh, it also has a glass, glass bottom boat facility. For those of you, if you're tired of snorkeling or diving one day, uh, you can stay dry and uh, use it for um, viewing out of out of the, from the glass bottom boat and see what the snorkelers and divers are seeing. So again, this is a new program. Um, it's for those who love uh, marine life, love either snorkeling and or diving. Uh, and it is at the ideal time of year in the Great Barrier Reef when there are no stingers, uh, the water is warm, uh, and it will be a unique way to see the Barrier Reef compared to any other offering that is out there. So many of you may have traveled with Zagram. We just wanted to go over a quick review of the expedition team so you get a feeling of who's going to be on these various programs. Many times multiple people will be, and we're not covering everybody who is on every trip, but just some of the uh, leaders. As we feel the expedition team is one of the things that really sets Zagram apart from the other companies. We have a higher ratio of expedition staff to passengers than most people. We have our, our, our staff loves working for us, so we have a longevity. They understand what we're trying to do, and they also have a very high caliber of education and an ability to translate that to you in terms that the average person can understand. Um, and so I say that Zagun's expedition team, bar none, is the best, uh, is the best in the business. Many of you probably know Mike. Uh, he is one of the founders of the company. Uh, he is the next edition leader for all 26 of our years. He's, I will say, one of the best in the business. He started uh, a career shortly after graduation, and he's now up to, I think, 190 countries. As an operations person, he is a logistics uh, expert, and I love the way he, he runs his trips. Um, he, is, he is fantastic for those of you who have not experienced a trip with Mike. Uh, but he will be both on uh, both Polynesia trips as well as on the Micronesia trip. Brad Clemson, who I was just mentioning, uh, is from Cairns, Australia, so obviously focuses on the Australia trips. Uh, he'll be on Kimberley and the Great Barrier Reef. He was born in Sydney. He's lived the last 20 years up uh, in Cairns on the great edge of the Great Barrier Reef. And he has a marine biology and also has a degree in uh, zoology. Uh, um, that's Brad. And that's Brad. Sorry about that. Uh, and then Jack Grove, uh, who is also a, a co-founder of uh, Zagram. He is a marine biologist, uh, research associate from in the section of fishes at the LA County Museum, the leading authority on fishes and marine environments of the Eastern Tropical Pacific. And he's going to be on both Polynesia trips and the Micronesia trips. Mike Moore, or MIMO, as he might be known to many of you, is going to be on the Polynesia trips, the Micronesia trips. Um, he works for us both as assistant EL and, and expedition leader, depending on the trip. He has his BS in biology, MS in ecology, uh, and he has spent 10 years conducting research around the Pacific Rim. He's lived in uh, the highlands of New Guinea uh, and walked logged hundreds of hours working underneath the water uh, and is generally a great uh, overall expedition uh, staff person. Um, Shirley Campbell, uh, who uh, is from Australia, she's actually an American who lives in, uh, in Australia, and she'll be on the Kimberley program and the Micronesia program. She's a social anthropologist and research fellow at, at the Australian National University uh, in uh, um, Canberra. And she has a special interest in the indigenous peoples of Australia, Melanesia, and the Pacific. Uh, and she lived with almost two years with the indigenous people in the Trobrian Islands, which are in New Guinea. It's a tiny coral atoll. And she's written a book recounting um, those experiences. So she has a specialized in the anthropology of art, uh, convinced that by understanding the way people represent their ideas through art is a good insight into um, their culture. Uh, Rich Pagin, um, who will be on the Polynesia and the Micronesia trips. He has had a career in conservation biology that's ranged from teaching science and environmental awareness to teenagers from LA. 
uh, to traveling the coast and river deltas of the Alaska's North Slope by Zodiac to, remote, to reach remote wetlands, um, where he monitored loon nests. He's participated in field biology projects. Um, and he's taught marine science and island ecology on Catalina Island in California for several years. A great general uh, naturalist who, for those of you who have traveled with Zagram, probably have met. And Brett Stevenson uh, is on all the trips uh, except uh, the Great Barrier Reef. Um, he is, uh, lives in uh, New Zealand. Uh, and in 2005, he completed his PhD studying the breeding biology of gannets in New Zealand. Um, and he also rediscovered the extinct New Zealand storm petrel, uh, a bird known previously from only three museum specimens collected. So again, a great general naturalist who has some real expertise. And he also recently completed the Birds of New Zealand, a photographic guide in his spare time. Uh, while home in New Zealand, when he's not out working for us, he conducts ecological research, conservation work, and co-owns uh, a tour operator. In fact, we use him on some of the programs uh, as our as our destination management company. So that's just a small uh, overview of the many staff we usually have on the, the 100 passenger ships, 10 staff. But just to give you a, a bit of a taste of the caliber and quality uh, of the staff, and you also often get someone from the office like Ellen out there. Yeah, I want to go. <laughs> yeah. So I'll talk with you a little bit about uh, the ship that we use. So uh, here's the Caledonian Sky, one of my favorite ships that we use. Um, all ocean view suites ranging from 220 to 245 square feet. Actually, I think some of the um, category six suites are even bigger than that. Um, it has, uh, as we mentioned, indoor, outdoor dining, and most importantly for us, a fleet of Zodiac that can take everybody at the same time where we want to go. Really beautiful ship. Uh, the 65 guest will discover used this in the Kimberly. So this uh, ship is being refurbished last. Has been refurbished. Has been refurbished. Has been refurbished as of eight weeks ago. Yeah. I was just in Singapore and met with the owners and saw all the pictures and we're using her in about 10 days time. Yeah. So they really <laughs> upgraded her. Yeah, so she's looking good. Um, also has a fleet of Zodiacs to explore more remote shores, and as John mentioned, um, the Explorer craft, which for the Kimberly with these huge tide, um, tide changes is so important because sometimes the ship can't get super close, so we have that super convenient Explorer craft to get you there as quickly um, as possible. So really, really nice ship there. Oh, there's a shot of the cabin. And the 42 guest coral expedition two. So this is a, a classic catamaran. It was purpose built to navigate the shallow waters of the Great Barrier Reef. So um, it's it's just a, a perfect. It was specifically designed for the Great Barrier Reef. You can see the shot there. Um, it's it's exactly what we want to do with Zagram trip on the Great Barrier Reef. Um, as John mentioned, she has a glass bottom boat, beautiful cabin. Um, uh, obviously, all of these ships are stocked already with the snorkeling gear. So when you arrive, you don't need, you don't need to bring that. Divers, you need to bring some stuff that you can call us, and we will tell you exactly what. Um, any other mentions about about the ships, John? I think that's no. I think covers that it. that covers for the for the areas that we we travel in the Pacific. Yeah. If you have questions about the cabin specifically, or if you want to know what is available or what particular kind of cabin, give us a call. Um, either myself, Dan, or Maggie are our expedition advisors here in the Zagram office. We'll be really happy to talk specific details with you um, and make sure that we get you set with exactly what is best for you. So at this time, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the question pane and we'll answer those for you. We'll just take a minute here to see if we get any questions through. Um, so one question we have is dive gear provided or do you guess there? I know you guys addressed that just a little bit. Could you maybe go into a little more detail about what is provided for diving? Yeah, definitely. So I think, and we should also mention, uh, so and uh, regulator and, and we'll, we'll go through those 
masking pins. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you should have your own dive set up. Um, and but the tanks and the weight belts are provided on board. And then we had another question about how our pricing compares to other expedition companies. So maybe if you guys want to talk about that and all all inclusiveness, that would be great. Yeah, um, definitely. So if you're comparing, um, I would say we're we're pretty much on a per diem basis, we're very very competitive. Very. Apples to apples is we're very inclusive include right from the start transfers in the beginning we include all gratuities to everybody on the ship or in a hotel we include beer and wine with lunch and dinner so really only if you want to have something other than beer and wine is really only your other additional costs all excursions are included. some of our competitors now include some but not others so you really have to look at the inclusiveness And we put and factor those in. We're on a per, day, per diem basis, very similar. Yeah. If you're on the Skywest on those Polynesia or Micronesia trips, we'll include the internet. Um, we we really try to make it so that you don't you you pay for the trip when you pay for it, and you don't have to worry about additional expenses adding up other than your international airfare. Um, I, I mean, just like gratuities alone. That, uh, really, you'll have very small um, additional payments. It is on board. Three and bar bill. That's it. <laughs> uh, well, there's not any other questions at the time. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us today, and wanted to let you know that this webinar will be online um, within the next 24 hours, so you can listen again from home. Also, wanted to apologize. I know that there were some audio issues, and we'll try to address those certainly for the next time. So hopefully the online version um, will be a little bit easier to listen. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Uh, please feel free to give our office a call if you have any questions. Otherwise, you can look for the recorded session soon. Many thanks.